would be some non-negotiable um, objective and, and I guess from a planning perspective um, that, uh, yeah, really important for a successful return to performance, do you think? Yeah. Uh, so when when planning a rehab, I'll probably the principles that I, and, and, and again, it's sort of we employ it at Melbourne that I've um, taken a lot from all of um, my colleagues there, I suppose, is um, the things that I think will set you up successfully is um, probably a handful of things, but early loading. So the tissue that's injured um, specifically, I think should get some load into it. Now that's again, dependent on what the tissue is. Um, obviously, uh, bone may need some immobilization or, or non weight bearing, but you still then want to get some load in when allowed to. Ligament, you're wanting it to get as stiff as possible rather than pliable, like a tendon or a muscle. So, again, you're trying to probably immobilize that a bit more. Your favorite ways to um, self develop yourself. You've mentioned uh, and throughout the whole podcast how, you know, how you're curious and you love to ask questions from your colleagues. So, clearly, that's something that you really value um, asking a lot of questions. Are there some uh, other methods that you've found helpful along the way, whether it be podcasts, uh, re research articles, uh, calling yeah. other colleagues outside of different sports? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, what you touched on would probably be what I'd have as, as the number one, like using your colleagues around you, um, whatever environment you're in, um, I'd be putting a sure bet that there'd be someone, there'd be people around you that you can learn from. Um, and probably sometimes, um, could even be annoying for my colleagues as people I've worked with, but I like to ask them lots of questions, even yourself, Jack, when we're chewing the fat in the weight room um, on, of an afternoon. Uh, I think that that's probably how I've developed my knowledge the most. About from a, a challenge point of view or, or moments throughout your professional career where yeah, you've been uh, in a challenging situation, but ultimately you've worked through it and, and learned something from it. What would be the challenge? And then what did you learn? Um, I mean... Rather, I mean, it's not necessarily a, a specific situation, but um, the challenge of working within a team in elite sport I touched on, like the collaborating is one of the best things, but it also can be one of the most difficult things because there's so many different opinions and inputs. Everyone's yep. trying to achieve the same thing, but you, there's also an element of a little bit of slice of the pie and be heard and I want my opinion to be taken seriously. So the challenge of that is enormous. Um, and mm -hmm. I think that, um, how you can um, sort of, I think, maximise that is sort of enter those discussions with a bit of humility. Business point of view, no doubt there'll be some business owners listening in. Um, you also run a business, Enhanced Sports Physiotherapy. Um, do you want to talk to us a little bit about what it's all about uh, and your role and how you balance that with your role also at the Melbourne Footy Club? Uh, yeah, sure, mate. I, um, I started it with my... Uh, best mate from uni, um, David Faye, he's an exceptional physio um, that's had, you know, different experience in sport himself. Um, and he's an exceptional business mind as well. So we sort of work well together. We set up um, this clinic that we've we run very much part-time um, involved with uh, sort of around our other work. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, I've touched on it, but in terms of the challenge of running a business is really rewarding, but also just the clinical exposure that, Dave and I get, you know, we've developed a little bit of a brand of sort of sporting clientele linked to um, local sporting clubs and surgeons and doctors sending us sort of the sporting and active population. So the people that we're getting um, through the door are people who are motivated and athletes that we really enjoy working with. So from a rehab perspective, uh, I know you're big on your processes and, and planning. Um, can you touch on, the, on why this is so important to you from a rehabilitation point of view? Yeah, sure, mate. Um, I I think that, um, like, yeah, as you said, like, I, you know, having a sound process, robust process within a team is so important. Um, I think that it it just, it, well, the first and foremost is that I think it provide, it sets the athlete up um, with the highest chance of success. Mm -hmm. um, I think that just across my career, um, you know, the processes can adapt, but having a, a sound sort of um, uh, you know, almost a flow chart of how you um, plan and conduct your rehab um, is going is to um, educate the athlete um, on the starting point and their end point. It's going to give them um, a really clear understanding of what they need to do to achieve that. 